Phil, hello. Hey, Dave. What's going on, brother? Oh, man. Well, I reckon, first of all, we need to do this properly. We need to introduce you in the way that you deserve. So if you oh, will. Come now. Come on now. Ladies and gentlemen, my first guest of the evening is a metal giant. And once you hear his voice, you know it's capable of destroying your house. Philip Anselmo, welcome to Distortion. On distortion there, David, you. <laughs> Man, it is so great to finally talk to you. I mean, I've been listening to you for over 20 years now, so this is a bit of a buzz for me. Well, you're making me feel old, but for God's sakes, it's the <laughs> truth. You ought to hear my prostate in the morning. <laughs> it screams. <laughs> We're here to talk about the new Down EP, Down 4 Part 1, the Purple EP. How important... How do you like that? I like it, man. I like it. You know, at the end of the day, when I'm sitting there, they're like, well, what are we going to call this thing? I said, you know what? Let all the friggin' experts out there name the record. You know, it's like, let them call it what they want. Let's just us deliver the music. Does that make any sense there, David? Yes, it does. Absolutely, Philip. It makes perfect sense to me. I enjoyed it. Uh, we've got to talk about it. You've now got Pat Bruders on board from Crowbar. Uh, I mean, Rex left some pretty big shoes to fill, but Pat's just stepped up. No worries. I'm going to tell you what. I've known Pat a very long time. Mm. And I'll just say this to make it short. Pat came in with his own structure on the base that to me really creates a a depth in these songs. His bass lines are so creative, Mm. and honestly, he surprised, I think, all of us. And he really works, works, works. He's a fantastic bass player. He plays with his fingers, and he's tight as a crab's ass. (laughs) And I love it. (laughs) Now, we have to uh, start with the opening uh, track here, Levitation. This one just slowly chugs away and building that anticipation before it levitates oh man it's like a roller coaster you just want to get on and go can you tell me like from your side what it's what was that about well once again i approached this ep put it this way i had a great distance from it okay and i did it very purposefully i wanted this thing to be so organic i i you know besides being there for the actual structuring of the songs when you know i I was there for when everybody laid their tracks i I punched them in i punched them out i did all that kind of work but when it came time to actually really do my vocals i distanced myself I, i took a step back and i let the phrasing i let the the syllables i let all these things dictate instead of concepts moral concepts uh, civilized concepts I, I i i i thrived on the fucking absurd is what i really did <laughs> and the and the end result you know there is some sort of comprehensive thing there you know so to me it's the same way i approached the first demo mm. in 1992 i didn't show up with a handful of uh, lyrics or none of us showed up with anything yeah. we sh- flew in on an idea and from there you know we knew the creativity level was for real and uh, you know once again you put us in the room it's going to sound like down music and I let it come organically and for me I like to write image conscious lyrics mm-hmm. I like for people to form their own opinion opinions and fit it into their lives the way they need to. Mm. There is no true concept anywhere. I left it all up to conjecture. Well, the, the first uh, single from the EP, Witch Tripper. Now, apparently this has got a bit of a joke behind the name. Where did it come of from? Of course. Yeah. Of course. You know, it's like, you know what? Back in the Pantera days, songs like Psycho Holiday and Fucking Hostile, Mm. both of them were inside jokes to begin with. And then, of all people, Vinnie Paul comes up to me, he's like, man, those would be great song titles. And I'm like, no, 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 no. (laughs) But sure enough, when the proper music came to light then of course all of a sudden it it made some form of sense 
And never in my life did I think I would write a song called Witch Tripper, but <laughs> it, it was it was forced. They kept saying, we've got to do it, we've got to do it. And me, the, the ever pessimist, I'm like, no, 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 no way. I mean, what, what's it going to be about? What are we talking about? What is this? How do we explain this joke to people? Well, uh, you know, once again, I, I concentrated on imagery. Mm. We were in Spain when this joke came about in this picturesque, beautiful, unpopulated little town. And God bless, I cannot remember the name of it, and I should be kicked. But damn it, I'll tell you, it was beautiful. Yeah. And that's where the witch tripper originated, and... Uh, that is where the lore is, and perhaps on a more lengthy interview, I'd give you the full story. But honestly, like other times in my life, uh, a joke turned into something tangible. And hey, you gotta admit, witch trippers kind of kick ass. Eh? Yeah, 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 absolutely, Not man. Bad. Not bad for a stoner tune. Yeah, I like it, man. I think the whole EP's got that nice sludgy kind of swagger to it. I really, really dig it. Now, I've got to ask you about the closing track, Miss Fortune Teller. I think it's my favourite on the EP, but how the hell did Down come about to writing a, a song that was over nine minutes long? Well, if you think about it, we are, the, I'll tell you right now, any song that we've done, the ending, if they're short, if the ending's short and abrupt, believe me, it's one of the most forced, argued over events that could happen in the jam room. Mm. <laughs> because we don't know how to end songs. We'll <laughs> fucking keep grinding on the riff over and over and over. Think about Bury Me in Smoke, to case in point of where you just can't stop playing the riff. The last song on uh, Over the Under, the yeah. third record, uh, Nothing in Return. We, uh, there's no, we didn't know how the hell to end it. So <laughs> once again, Miss Fortune Teller, it was one of those riffs that just, it, I couldn't say stop. I couldn't say, all right, fellas, then let's call it a rap. Mm. Stop. You know, I couldn't get angry and god damn it we let it go to where it crumbled and you know what i'm good with that because yeah. guess what anything else in my opinion would not be down like it wouldn't be worthy at all now why was the um what was the thought process between you know doing the four eps rather than a whole album or a double album is it different moods or just take it as it comes how does it work well you kind of said it just right there man you know i like i say all of down have other obligations in other bands. Mm. I have big obligations here with the record company, House Core Records, and we got a million things going on. So, actually, it's like, oh, geez. Um, people talk about four EPs. We've brought it up, of course, and then the press has taken it and run with it. I think it is the big plan. I think we can do it. And to me, to do EPs, it's so much easier. Yeah. To apply ourselves, as busy as we are, to apply ourselves to a 10-song, 12-song, full-length record these days, it's, it's uh, draining, it's taxing, and for me... When you do something like that, there's more probability of a song being considered a filler-type song. Okay. With an EP, you can concentrate on four songs or six songs or whatever it is. You can concentrate on those particular tracks, and it's not this big, drawn-out thing. Mm. And it's just, it's just easier. And in theory, hopefully quicker to get product out because once again we are liars you know we've told the press we've told people we've told friends and crowds of people yeah we got something new in the works and it'll be out next year and five years later we're talking about it still so it's like i'm not promising jack to anybody but i'll say that hey the four eps are in the plans it's in the works 
And I think, once again, in theory, it's the way to go, brother. Yeah, I like the idea. Now, when can we expect to see Down in Australia again? Whenever the offers come. Oh, yes, please. And all I know right now is that some American dates, some European dates, and then a short run back in America. And, Jack, that's all I know. Okay. And another thing I know is the first thing that's going to come out on my record label as far as anything solo, Phil Anselmo stuff, yep. will be uh, with a split with War Beast, and hopefully that's done by the end of the year. Nice. And I know I need to, to really, you know, devote my time to down, but I think by March next year, the full length should be mixed. It's already done. I'm bored with it by now, but I <laughs> want, you know, the public deserves to hear this particular solo effort because I think it's worthy. I think it's uh, an interesting, extreme thing. It's the most extreme thing I've ever done, really. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> it's very tough to describe. So, I, you know, I cannot wait for people to hear it. Not We're looking at 2013 March, perhaps, okay. somewhere around there. So I'm going to be a busy, busy guy no matter what. And during that time, whenever my solo record comes out, whatever, when down gigs are presented, believe me, if it's feasible, I will be there. Oh, nice. Know? And like normally, it. normally it's feasible. Yeah. I make it happen, man. Because oh, yeah, down to me, once again, the cult audience, it's a, it, it holds a very uh, important place in my heart. Ah, nice, man, nice. Well, I'm going to be over in your neck of the woods in October. I'm coming to New Orleans uh, in uh, October 18th. I'm going to be there. So I need some tips on what to go and check out. Oh, heck, man. I'm going to be on tour oh. all of October. But I'll tell you this. Go see the House of Shock. Okay. It is the haunted house that I built with some brothers and it's something that I really just don't have time for anymore, and I haven't been part of it for the last 10 years, but it's grown into this massive, unbelievable, complicated, haunted house. And it's uh, pretty, pretty impressive. I would say it's the best one in the city. Yeah. But I would visit all the haunted areas. There's one called uh, the Mortuary, which is downtown New Orleans, and it's actually in an old mortuary. Okay. It's like a, the real deal, and they've made a haunted house in there, and I've been through it before. It's pretty good. Not oh. too bad. House of Sharks the best, though. All right. Well, I'll definitely but check But I would go out. eat something, man. Go yeah, eat oh, yeah. something. Don't worry about that. I'm a big eater, man. I'm 6'4 and 320. So, uh, yeah, God, I... you're a heavyweight. I am. I'm a heavyweight these days. <laughs> I, I'm a light. I, I'm like a... 205 pounds. Oh, man, you're a fighting fit. I'm all right. Not too bad for 44. I yeah. hit 10 rounds on the bag today. Oh, nice work, mate. Nice. Well, you're doing better than I am, Bo. But, uh, look, I thank you for your time. We are going to get cut off very, very, man. Thank you very much for the time, and hopefully we'll see you there. If not, I'll see if I can get you in the States. Hey, man. Tap, come tap me on the friggin' shoulder. I would love to. Say, hey, man, we, we did a we did a fucking interview together. We'll, we'll go have a fucking beer, man. <laughs> that sounds bloody good, bud. All right, man. All right, brother. Nice talking to you. You too. Thanks very much, and talk to you soon. All right.